we are going to discuss the application of Bernoulli's principle. We have learned what is Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle is about the energy conservation law of a fluid passing through a pipe. It is an incompressible fluid. This is the point 1, this is the point 2. The pressure and the total energy at a point will be equal to the so pressure and the total energy at a point 2. Okay, we already discussed and derived what is Bernoulli's principle. Now, here we are going to discuss about the application or it is the consequences of Bernoulli's principle. Torricelli's law is derived from the Bernoulli's principle. Torricelli is a scientist who discovered Torricelli's law. According to him, the speed of efflux, the speed of efflux from an open tank, from an open tank will be equal to the speed of, will be equal to the speed of a freely falling body. Speed of a freely falling body. This is the Torricelli slope. So, in order to discuss in detail, we have to define what is efflux, what is the importance of open tank, etc. Okay, that is, efflux can be defined as fluid outflow. This is the fluid outflow. Consider this an open tank. It is an open tank. That is the topmost layer is, is contact with atmosphere. Okay. Now here we are having a, a small opening here. And a large opening here. Okay. This is an open tank having uh, two surfaces. This is the surface having area. A1. This is having the area A2 and the velocity of the fluid at this point is equal to 0 and we have the velocity at this point that is the speed of the efflux. This is the fluid outflow. This is the efflux. This is the efflux. We have to find the efflux that is we have to find the speed of efflux that is V1 so that we, have, we are having an open tank containing two openings that is point 1 and point 2 and we are having area areas A1 and A2 velocity of the fluid is represented as V1 and V2 and the first opening is about a height Y1 from the ground. It is height of the first point is Y1 and the second point is Y2. This is the Y2. This is the Y2. This is the distance of the height of the second point. Okay. Then we are having rho is the density of the fluid. Okay. This is the things we are going to study. Okay. Now we already have the equation of continuity. According to the equation of continuity A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. Here a1 and A2 are areas and V1 and V2 are velocities. Okay, so in general we can write it as area into velocity is a constant. This is the equation of continuity. Then here we have to find the speed of the efflux that is V1. That is V1. So, consider from the above equation, from the equation 1, 
we have V2 is equal to A1 V1 divided by A2. Here, area of the second point is very very greater than A1. And also we have V2 is equal to 0 because at point 2, the fluid is at rest. So, we can say that V2 is equal to 0. That is on the top, on the top portion. Now, we are going to apply the Bernoulli's principle, applying Bernoulli's principle at point 1 and 2. We are having the equation P1 plus half rho V1 square plus rho Y1 G is equal to P plus half rho V2 square plus rho Y2 Y2G. Here we are having P1 is equal to, let P1 is equal to PA is the atmospheric pressure. It is the atmospheric pressure since it is open to the atmosphere. And also we have V2 is equal to 0 and we are having Y2 minus Y1 is equal to H. That is from this we can, from here we can say that Y2 minus Y1 is the height of the particular volume. Okay, then up, uh, applying this is equation number 2. So equation 2 becomes PA plus half. Rho V1 square plus Rho Y1G is equal to P. This is the and also we have P2 is equal to P. That is P plus half Rho V2 square plus Rho Y2G. Here we have V2 is equal to 0 and we have the equation half rho v1 square is equal to we are taking pa to the right side that is p minus pa plus rho y2g minus rho y1g that is equal to p minus pa plus rho g y2 minus y1 that is equal to P minus PA plus rho GH. Then V1 square is equal to 2P minus PA divided by rho plus 2GH. And V1 is equal to root of 2P minus PA by rho plus to G H. This is the equation for speed of F flux. The speed of F flux V1. Okay, that is V1 is directly proportional to root of P minus P A and it is V1 is inversely proportional to rho and it is Directly proportional to root 2gh. Then here we are going to discuss the Torricelli's law that is under the special cases that is first case when p very very greater than pa then we can neglect this term. This term that is 2gh is neglected neglected. So, thus the speed of efflux become the speed of efflux will be V1 is equal to root of 2 P minus PA divided by rho. That is V1 proportional to container pressure. Container pressure. This Special case, this property applied in rocket propulsion. 
is applied in rocket propulsion if the tank is open if the tank is open then p becomes pa then we are having v1 we are having v1 is equal to v1 is equal to 2 gh since p minus pa is equal to 0 since we are we are having v1 is equal to root 2 gh this is the equation for freely falling body that is we know the equation v square minus u square is equal to 2 as that is consider a body at a height s at a height s or we are simply we are dropping a body then we are having initially the initial velocity is zero then we are having s is equal to which is equal to height then we can return as v square is equal to 2 ah that is v is equal v square is equal to 2 gh because it is free fall so free fall a become equal to g that is v is equal to root 2 gh that is the torricelli's law states that the speed of a flux from an open tank will be equal to the speed of freely falling body this is the torricelli's law this is the torricelli's law now we are going to discuss a new topic venturi meter it is the second application of bernoulli's principle we already learned what is bernoulli's principle and torricelli's law then venturi meter is the second application venturi meter is a device to measure the flow of incompressible fluid to measure is a device used to measure flow of flow of incompressible fluid what is mean by incompressible fluid that is density is a constant for incompressible fluid density is a constant then consider the figure the figure shows a venturi meter a venturi meter consists of a pipe which have an area that is a wider area to having a wider area and it is having a constriction or a narrow path or narrow area it is called throat or it is called constriction it is called constriction then consider the tube with broad diameter and a small constriction at the middle and then we have a manometer that is the u shaped the u shaped tube is called the manometer and we have some liquid called mercury in it and it is the height is the h is the height of mercury column now we have to find the liquid that is consider a liquid flowing through this pipe and we have to find the velocity of the liquid we have to find the velocity of the liquid the manometer that is the fluid in the pipe have a density rho and the fluid in the manometer have a density rho m that is m stands for manometer rho is the density of the liquid we have to find the flow then consider a1 is the area and v1 is the velocity velocity of the liquid at this point then 
A2 is the area and V2 is the velocity of the fluid at this area. Then we have the equation of continuity. We have the equation of continuity that is A1V1 is equal to A2V2 where A is the area of the pipe and V is the velocity of the fluid flowing through the pipe. Then we have to find the V2. V2 or we have to find the, the velocity of the liquid. So from this equation we can write V2 is equal to A1 by A2 into V1. Consider we are giving area A1 as A and A2 as small letter A. This is the area of the broader, this is the area of the broader end and this is the area of the smaller section. Then, then we can say that V2 is equal to A, A by A into V1. Then, then we have the Bernoulli's equation P1 plus half rho V1 square is equal to P2 plus half rho V2 square. Here we, we omit one, uh, one term that is H rho G. It is having the same height. The left hand side and the right hand side have the same value. So we, we, we neglect that tape. Hence the Bernoulli's equation become like this. And then substituting for the value of V2 from the above equation, we get P1 plus half rho V1 square is equal to P2 plus half rho A by A the whole square into V1 square. Then P1 minus P2 is equal to half rho a by a the whole square into v1 square minus half rho v1 square. Taking the common terms outside then we get a by a the whole square minus 1. This is the p1 minus p2. We know that p1 minus p2 is the pressure difference of the two points then because of this the fluid the fluid or the mercury inside the manometer rises or shows height differences that is a height difference occurs so that will be equal to p1 minus p2 is equal to rho m G H. This is the pressure difference of the mercury column. Then we have the two equations. Equation 1 and equation 2. Then equating we get rho m G H is equal to half rho V1 square A by A the whole square minus 1. From this we can calculate the velocity V1 square is equal to 2 rho m g h divided by rho into A by A the whole square minus 1 which can be represented as which can be represented as V is equal to root of 2 rho m g h divided by rho into we are taking this term to the numerator so we get a by a the whole square minus 1 the whole raised to minus 2 so this is the fluid flow that is we can measure the velocity of a fluid flow uh, flowing through a pipe using this equation then application of Venturi meter are 
it is used in carburetor of automobile and it is used in filter pump then it is used in bunsen burner it is used in atomizer and it is used in sprayers okay these are the application of venturi meter now we are going to discuss a new topic blood flow and heart attack the bernoulli's principle explains the flow of blood in arteries consider this is a blood vessel it is like a pipe carrying blood so blood and after a long time some materials are deposited in the walls of the artery so it is become like a venturi meter it is become like a venturi meter that is it is the wider area and middle having a constriction so in the large area we have the equation a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 this is the equation of continuity then that is when area increases velocity decreases when velocity increases the pressure decreases when velocity increases pressure decreases it is as a consequence of bernoulli's principle so the pressure of this region decreases then the outer the outer part of the blood vessel is try to constrict or compress the blood blood vessel or the artery so the artery collapses due to external pressure so that heart exerts extra pressure to open the artery and forces the blood and forces the blood as a result the velocity again the velocity again increases thereby pressure decreases and it leads to results in repeated collapse so this may result in heart attack that is when the area of the blood vessel decreases the velocity of the blood at that point increases thereby pressure decreases so the external pressure pushes or it collapses the artery so as to maintain a flow heart exert extra pressure again the velocity of the blood increases again also the pressure decreases this this repeats so it result in heart attack now we are going to discuss a new application of bernoulli's principle that is dynamic lift dynamic lift is a term used in fluid dynamics it is a force that acts on a body by virtue of its motion through a fluid that is any body is moving through a fluid it experiences a force it experiences a force or whether it is in the moving direction whether it is in the upward direction it it depends on the motion of the object inside the fluid this type of uh, force acts on a body that is moving through a fluid is called dynamic lift for example a spinning ball a spinning ball we have seen the in cricket we have spin bowlers and fast bowlers what is the difference between that spin bowlers are using a trick that trick is to deviate the ball from its parabolic trajectory that is the uh, the aim of the spin bowler is to deviate deviate the ball from its parabolic trajectory that is we know what is parabolic trajectory that is we if we throw a ball or something into air it will go up and after some time it will fall down this is called the parabolic trajectory then if the ball spins it 
will not take the original path but it will take another path that depends on the dynamics of the ball in the air in the fluid that is here the fluid is air that is the dynamic lift that is dynamic lift is a force acts on a body by virtue of its motion through fluid in this case the fluid is air it is one of the application also aeroplane wing is an another example of dynamic lift now we are going to the details of the spinning of ball consider a ball which is moving without spin that is we have the fluid air going in this direction with a velocity v without spin then the air around the ball move opposite to that the motion that of the motion of ball that is this path this path of fluid is called streamline path it is called a streamline path then in the fin in the figure we can see that the velocity of the fluid at the top will be equal to the velocity of the fluid at the bottom that is there is no pressure difference that is there is no upward force or downward force that is net force on the ball is zero this air doesn't exert upward or downward force it is the this is the case of ball moving without spin now we are going to discuss the ball moving with the spin consider the figure here the ball is moving in a or spinning in a clockwise direction because of the spinning the ball drag air along with it that is it drag some air more than that of the lower part that is the air is crowded in the top of the ball that is the ball drags air along with it if the surface of ball is rough more air will be dragged more air will be dragged so the ball is moving forward and the air is moving backward that is also the velocity of air at the top is greater than the velocity of air at the bottom we know that when velocity increases pressure decreases this is the bernoulli's principle because of this it experiences or the top part of the ball experiences a low pressure that is it causes the pressure difference and a net upward force is experienced by the ball that is the dynamic lift is happen that type that is the dynamic lift due to spinning is called magnus effect that is called the magnus effect because of the magnus effect the ball moves upward or it it deviates or it deviates the parabolic path this is the principle behind the spinning ball in cricket now we are discussing about the aerofoil or the lift on aircraft wing the figure shows a cross section of aerofoil so what is an aerofoil aerofoil is a solid piece designed to provide an upward dynamic lift when it moves horizontally through air horizontally through air 
This is the definition of aerofoil. It is a solid piece. It is designed to provide an upward dynamic lift when it moves horizontally through air. This is the principle of our aeroplanes. This is the principle of aeroplane lifting. That is, the figure shows the cross section of the aerofoil. Then, when aerofoil moves against wind, the, when this is the uh, velocity or this direction of wind, the, uh, the aerofoil is moving against wind, the orientation of the wing relative to flow of direction causes the streamlines to crowd together above the wing more than below it. That is, because of this specific design, uh, the streamlines of the air will crowded more in the upward direction. So, it, it, it causes a high velocity here and from this we have, this is a low velocity here. That is why here the pressure decreases and here the pressure increases. That is a pressure difference occurs. When an aerofoil moves against the flow of direction of the wind. The speed of the fluid is greater at the top. So, there is an upward force resulting in dynamic lift. This is called the dynamic lift. This is the principle of aeroplane lifting. The upward force is balanced by the weight of the plane. It will not go like this but it is balanced by it is its weight that is it is uh, it is it is a balanced force it is also an application of bernoulli's principle now we are going to discuss a new topic viscosity it is a property of fluid mainly a property of liquid consider the figure in the first figure, we, ha we are having honey. In second picture, we are having water. And in third picture, we are having some oil. Consider, I place some drops of water, some drops of water here, and some drop of oil, and some drop of honey. Can you say, which fluid or which liquid is comes first under the glass plate? We know that it is the water comes first, then the oil, then the honey. What is the reason behind that? That is we can say that the different fluid, different fluids have different speed. What is the reason for that? Why, why it is like this? That is, or we can say that there is a resistance. Resistance to motion in some liquid. That is, in water, uh, it is having less resistance. Or for, and for honey, it is having high resistance. Or it is like an internal, or it is like an internal friction. Consider two glass plates and we are having a liquid in between the glass plate and bottom of the glass plate is fixed. It is fixed and we are moving the top of top glass plate in a velocity v. Then we can say that if it is water, if the fluid is water, we can say that we have to apply a small amount of force. If it is oil, we have to apply more force to push the upper glass plate. If it is honey, honey, more force would be applied. That is, force on the honey will be greater than force on the oil. It is greater than force on the water. What is the reason behind this? It is a property. It is a property of a liquid by which it opposes by which it opposes the relative motion between its 
different layers is called viscosity. This is the property behind all these things. That is, it is a property of a, that is viscosity is a property of a liquid by which it opposes the relative motion between its different layers. Now, we are going to discuss what is laminar flow. Consider two glass plates. One is fixed and other is moving with a velocity v. We enclosing a fluid in between the plates and the bottom layer is fixed and it is and the top layer is moving with velocity v. Consider the layer, uh, consider the fluid is composed of certain layers. Then we can say that because the uh, bottom plate is fixed, we, we can say that the layer attached to the fixed surface is at rest. Also, the top glass plate is moving with a velocity v and the layer attached to it is having a velocity is equal to v. That is, the, the topmost, that is, the upper layer, that is, the upper upper layer pulls forward and the lowest layer is at rest and it is moving with a velocity v. Then consider a middle layer. Consider a middle layer. We can say that the velocity o, the, the velocity profile o these layers can be given as this is the maximum velocity then next is having less velocity and next is having less less and ultimately it is at rest for the lower most layer and if we take a middle layer we can say that the upper layer is pulling that layer forward and the back and the lower layer is pulling backwards. This type of flow is called laminar flow. For a glass plate, the liquid profile is like this. That is, upper layer has the most velocity. Then it is decreasing and at last it is zero. That is, this is the laminar, this is one case of laminar flow and if we take a pipe, a cylindrical pipe and a fluid is flowing through the pipe, then we can say that the middle layer, middle layer of the fluid is having the greatest velocity, then it is decreasing towards the walls of the pipe. And ultimately, it is zero for the walls. Okay, that is, it is in a shape like this. This is called laminar flow. Okay, that is, the layer of the liquid in contact with the fixed surface is stationary and the velocities of the layers increases uniformly from bottom to the top layer. Now, we are going to express the coefficient of viscosity. For that, consider two glass plates and initially the fluid is at this position. We call it as A, B, C, D. Then it is having a new position when we move the top plate that is, it is having a distance delta x. So, the velocity can be defined as velocity is the distance by time. That is, delta t will be taken for the liquid to flow from B to this point. That is, we call it as E. Then, we can find the 
shear strain. The shear strain is equal to change in length divided by original length. Changing length is the delta x and original length is the length we are taking the portion. That is, we can say that the rate, the rate of shear strain, we find the rate of shear strain that is, it is with respect to time in divided by time. Then we can say that delta x by delta t can be given as velocity. That is, rate of shear strain will be equal to V by L. Then we can express stress by strain is equal to force per unit area divided by V by L that is a strain. Then F L by A into V. We call it this ratio. The stress by strain ratio we call it as a letter eta. Letter eta which is called the coefficient of coefficient of viscosity. Coefficient of viscosity. And we can write the unit of coefficient of viscosity eta. Then we, we, we have the equation eta is equal to F L by A V. Then for, for writing the unit we are that is we are having Newton meter by this is area that is meter square meter per second and the second will go to this and we can cancel this so we get a unit called Newton second meter raised to minus 2 this is this is the unit and it is also called Pascal second it is also called Pascal second, but the SI unit, but the SI unit of eta is the Poiselli. Poiselli. That is capital P L. Poiselli. Poiselli is the name of a scientist. So it is in capital letters. Okay, then we are writing. The dimensional formula, the dimensional formula, we get m l raised to minus 1, t raised to minus 1. This is the dimensional formula of coefficient of viscosity. And we can say that like our water, water, alcohol, etc. are having less viscous and also we can write as coal tar, blood, glycerin, etc. are having high viscous or high viscosity. And also note that when Temperature increases when temperature increases, viscosity, viscosity decreases. It is for liquids. It is only for liquid. But when temperature increases, when temperature increases, Viscosity increases for air. This is because when temperature increases, the collision between the molecules become more and more, thereby the relative motion of the fluid decreases. But in the case of 
liquid when temperature increases molecules get extra kinetic energy and thereby its motion increases or the, its velocity increases this is the uh, case of viscosity and we can write again eta is equal to fl by av this is the coefficient of viscosity